This is a treasure chest from one of my rooms that I'm currently working on. I want to reward players for finding it, but how do I do that? This chest does not open, so instead I want players to be able to just click on it and get rewards that way. So in order to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my maker pen and just put an interaction volume around it. Now I'm going to cover the entire chest just like this. Once that's done, I'm going to detach this chip and move it somewhere to make circuits a little bit easier to work with. In order to get started when working with circuits, I always ask myself, what do I want it to do? When I click on the treasure chest, I want it to add inventory items, which is a new thing because this is a Rooms 2.0 tutorial. I want it to add an inventory item, aka gold in this case, into my inventory. So how am I supposed to do that? All we're going to need to do that is the inventory item add chip, which is seen here. We're going to take the on use or hold completed output of the interaction volume and connect it to the run input of the inventory item add. Now if you were to run this, it's not going to do anything because the inventory item is not defined yet. So we're going to need the inventory item constant. As you can see, there's the inventory item constant chip, and all we're going to do is connect that to the inventory item input so that we can know what we are giving the players. We're going to need to configure the inventory item constant to tell us which inventory item we're going to be giving. In this case, it's going to be gold. So in case you don't know how to make an inventory item, you're going to open your watch and go to this room. You're going to go to settings, and then inventory items, and then add inventory item. For this inventory item, we're going to be making gold. We're just going to name it real quick. Later, we can add an image, maybe a description. And for gold specifically, we're not going to let players use it. Instead, it's going to be a store item only. So interacting with NPCs is going to be the only way to decrease it, like buying something from a shop. So we're going to leave this off for now. But for other inventory items, say like a health potion, you could turn this on so that players can use it whenever they want. And for gold, I'm going to make it always visible, but this is really your preference. And then click save. It will now show up in the inventory constant in the drop down menu, and you can just select the inventory item that you want to use. Who opens a treasure chest and finds only one piece of gold? That's not exciting. So I'm going to change the quantity up to let's say 50. Now keep in mind that this is going to be my currency, so I'm going to price things accordingly as or with how much I'm giving out. Giving out just gold is kind of boring for a treasure chest, so I'm going to award players who find this chest with three bonus inventory items. The first is 15 extra gold, the second is going to be a speed boost, and the third is a, is a healing potion. And how I'm going to do this is by using a random integer and execution integer switch. What that's going to do is it's going to choose between any of these three and award that in addition to the original 50 gold pieces. How we're going to do this is we're going to take the run output of the inventory item add and put it into the input of the random integer. Next we're going to take the output of the random integer and put it into the input of the execution integer switch. Then the value of the random integer is going to go into the match execution integer switch. Next, we want to configure the random integer chip to have a minimum of one and a maximum of however many other bonus items there are. So in this case, it's going to be one and three. Next, what we want to do is configure the execution integer switch and where it says add value to compare, you're going to enter a number, one through three in this case, and add value after each one. After each of those are added, it should look something like this. And basically what that means is when the player clicks on the chest, 
it's going to give them an inventory item, and once they have received the inventory item, the random integer will choose a random number between these two numbers, and then executes this execution integer switch. And whatever number that it chooses, it will give the player that specific inventory item. We can go ahead and connect each of the outputs for the execution integer into the inputs, or the run, of each of the corresponding inventory item adds. Now you have a 1 in 3 chance of getting each of these different inventory items when you collect the chest. Now here's an interesting problem. When you collect from the treasure chest, there's no limit. You can collect as much gold as you want. So what's a way that we can stop this? The way that I'm going to solve this problem is with a delay and a not chip, as you can see here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the interaction volume and take the is locked output and connect it to the inside of the not chip. What that does is it's taking the current state of the interaction volume, which right now is not locked or false, goes into the not chip, and then it reverses the output. That output goes back into the interaction volume, so now this set locked execution acts as a toggle. And how we're going to utilize that is we're going to take the run from the delay, and this means that when someone grabs the interaction volume or sets it to run, the run will happen immediately, setting it to locked. And how to unlock it is we're going to take the after delay and also connect that to the set locked. So when someone grabs the interaction volume, this will run and lock the interaction volume. But after the delay, however long you want, it will unlock. How we're going to connect all these chips is by using a sequence chip. We're going to say that the interaction volume, when held or used, it's going to do both the inventory add and start the delay. Now with the current delay setup that we have, all the players need to do to bypass it is to spam click the chest. In order to prevent this, all you're going to need to do is configure this interaction volume and change the interaction hold time. I'm going to set it at 2 seconds. So now I'm back. The interaction volume has a time limit that you need to hold it, and as you can see, you can't duplicate it. Simple, right? Anyhow, that's the end of this video. I hope you can take what circuits I've taught you and make it your own. These same circuits are what you can use for a harvest system. Like if you want to make a side quest where you go around collecting different flowers, these circuits are exactly what you need. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the library, Rextorians.